Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is the next part of Unit 6, Stoichiometry, the video cut out. And it cut out when I said, I had the most embarrassing thing happen and then the video cut out. And now I can't remember what I talked about. It was the most embarrassing thing. Can't remember. Maybe I'll think of it in a second. I'll tell you if I do. I've had many embarrassing things happen to me, as you can imagine. Okay. Oops, too far. Come back down. Okay, here's our next problem. So we're gonna, what are we gonna do first? We learned to do it in English class. What are we gonna do first? Annotate. We're gonna annotate, okay? If you had 150 grams of carbon monoxide, that's a number in the chemical, so we circle it, and four, 200, oh, I remember it. I remember the embarrassing thing. 24.5 grams of hydrogen making methanol uh, 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 What is your limiting reactant? Sometimes it's called limiting reagent. Uh, how much could you make in grams? So my question is methanol in grams All right now what's wrong with this problem? Why is it ugly? What's wrong with it? I have two things that I know. Yes. So that's what's weird. Now, if it, let me explain it to you. Uh, uh, when, uh, say I'm making brownies. I've been invited to some ladies function and I'm gonna bring five boxes of brownies. So I go to the store and I get my favorite kind, Ghirardelli. I used to be on team Duncan Hines, but I've moved. I've moved off of that team. I'm on team Ghirardelli now. Double chocolate with the chocolate chips. And I get five of the boxes, the best brownie mix. And I go home and I'm ready to make my brownies. And I've paid my water bill, so there is plenty of water in the tap. I get down a big thing of vegetable oil. I got that. I go to the refrigerator and there are only four eggs. And the brownie mix calls for two. How many boxes can I actually make? Two. I can only make two boxes. So I had something limit how much I could make. It was the eggs. In reality, I can only make two boxes. All right, everybody understand that? Then we do this in chemistry too. You go to your stock room and you only have this much carbon monoxide and that much hydrogen. But unlike brownie mixes, we don't know them so well. And we have to figure out which one we're gonna run out of first. With my brownie mixes, my limiting reactant was eggs. With this, I don't know. So I have to do the problem twice, see whichever one is less, and that's what really happens. Just like in reality, I can only make two boxes and two is less than five, it's the same thing. So think of brownies, and then this problem won't be hard. And then you have to do the problem twice. Now, this was the embarrassing story. One time I did have to take brownies to something. And I was on a health food kick. So I decided that instead of using canola or vegetable oil, I was gonna use healthy oil. And I used light tasting olive oil. So I, did I taste them first? No, that was another problem. So we're at the ladies event. There's a lady speaking and then this other person who was there took one of the brownies, they looked great, and she put it in her mouth and, I, and could not bite it because it made it as hard as a rock. It would break your tooth. And everybody started going. <laughs> My brownies were unedible. They were so bad. So that's your little cooking tip. Don't try to put olive oil in brownies. It's terrible. All right, so now let's do the problem. We're gonna have to do it twice. Um, so what I'm gonna do to keep this straight is use different colors. So for carbon monoxide, it's gonna be blue. So I'm gonna write, and see how I have a two right here, so I already know this is balanced. I'm gonna write what I know under carbon monoxide in blue. 152.5 grams. I'm gonna make the uh, hydrogen pink. So I'm gonna make that pink. So I'm gonna write what I know for hydrogen here. 24.5 grams. And what I don't know, the, uh, the methanol is gonna be green, question mark grams, okay? So now I have grams, so what do I need next? The molar mass is 
the molar masses. So we'll draw a nice little green M&M &M right there to remind us of that. And we're going to add them up. So carbon monoxide, carbon, I just have one and it's 12, and one oxygen and it's 16. So what's that one? 12 plus 16? 28, right? So I've got to write it in blue to keep my little colors straight. So this is 28 grams per mole, okay? And, and uh, then for this one, hydrogen is just one. So what's one plus one? See, you still use first grade math. It's still important. Two grams per mole. And then we need to do the uh, methanol. And it is a little bit bigger. It's C-H-O. I have one carbon, four hydrogens, and one oxygen. Carbon is 12. Hydrogen is 1, oxygen is 16. 12 times 1 is 12, 4 times 1 is 4, and 16 times 1 is 16. So what is this? Add it up. You all see it? 32. 32. So I go over here, 32 grams per mole. All right, are we all good so far? Okay, next, what goes on the next line? The mole ratio. So the coefficient here is a 1. The coefficient here is a 2. See that 2? And the coefficient here is a 1. All right? We good here? So now what do we do? Draw our U. And what we're going to do first is we're going to do the carbon monoxide first. I'm going to get, I'm going to use orange for this U. I'm going to start from what I know and go around to what I don't know, and when I do it, I'm going to pretend like that pink is not even there. Just ignore that pink, because we're going to do it twice, once for blue and once for pink, so for right now, pink's not even there. So now, what do I write? What I know, which is I start here with 152.5 grams of carbon monoxide. What goes on the bottom? Grams of carbon monoxide, and what number goes with those grams? 28. What goes on the other side? One mole of carbon monoxide. What goes in the denominator? One mole of carbon monoxide. It's this mole right here. Okay? Now, we're not using that too. Remember, pink doesn't exist. Our other mole is the mole of the methanol. We'll call that big M. And it's right here. So we have one mole, that's our green mole, of methanol. Now, what goes in the denominator? It's this mole right here, one mole of methanol. And what goes on the other side of the fraction bar? 32 grams. 32 grams of methanol. Grams of carbon mark out, grams of carbon, moles of carbon, moles of methanol. I'm left with grams of methanol. And when I put in my calculator, I get, anybody got it yet? 174 grams of methanol. Okay, now we have to do it again. So let's change colors. That's the color we haven't used. We'll use black, boring black. Okay, so we're going to do it again. This time, this is where we're starting from, and that's where we're going to. So we're going to start with what we no. know, and this time, so this one was carbon dioxide. This one is hydrogen, and what we know is 24.5 grams of hydrogen. What goes down here? Grams of hydrogen, and the number that goes with grams, she said it, is two. What goes on the other side? One mole. One mole of hydrogen. Okay, what goes down here? Mole, one mole of hydrogen, and that is, oh, not one. It's, what is it? Two. Two. Two moles of hydrogen. It's that two right there. Now, as we go on around, I get to this green one mole of methanol. 
moles of methanol go on the bottom. It's this mole right here, one mole of methanol. And then the number that goes on top on the other side of fraction bar is 32 grams, 32 grams of methanol. And now we do the math. Grams of hydrogen mark out, moles of hydrogen mark out. Moles of methanol mark out. I'm left with grams of methanol. What's the answer? A hundred and was it 96? Yeah, 196. 96 grams of methanol. Now, we say to ourselves, which is less? Which is less? That one. So this is what really happens. We ran out of carbon monoxide first, so what's the limiting reactant? Carbon monoxide, and that's what really happens. How do we feel about that? See, we couldn't tell by looking at it like brownie mixes. We had to do the same problem, our regular old gram-to-gram -gram problem. We just had to do it twice. And I think it does help to do it in different colors. Maybe get one of those pens that click in four colors. You know what I'm talking about, the big fat blue ones? They go click, click, click. Get you some different colors. All right. Oh, that looks like some fancy math, doesn't it? Or can I scroll up? Okay, let's do our last bit here. Whoops, why is it right on top of itself? Look at that. That's so weird. Let's see if I do it this way, if that helps. I've officially freaked out the thing. Let's see if I can fix it over here. <laughs> Okay, my goodness, what a mess. Let's see. Oh, nope, it's still doing that. Let's see if I do it this way. Nope. <laughs> Come on. It is totally messed up. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to exit out. And they're radical. Okay, now we're going to go back to Word, and we're going to pull up the other class, first period. the other honors class. Okay. Question number seven. Okay. Now, what if you did the reaction but only got 150 grams when you were supposed to get 174? Okay, but you didn't. Now, that happens sometimes. Think about yesterday in lab. Remember the black stuff in the manganese dioxide in the test tube? Was it easy to get every bit of that out? If you were in lab and had to weigh every bit of that, do you think you could? No. Someone, they don't make tiny little spatulas to get it out with. Well, they do. It's called the rubber policeman. But it's really hard to get it all out. So sometimes you end up with a little less. You lose some. Did any of y'all spill some of that black powder yesterday? Yeah. Now, so sometimes you end up with a little less. Now, we have a formula we do. It's actual, what you really got, divided by theoretical, what you were supposed to get, times 100. So what we really got was 150. What we were supposed to get was 174 times 100 is our, our percent yield was 86.2%. Sometimes you get more than 100%. Usually that's because you didn't dry it out enough. You're supposed to dry it, but you ended up weighing it when it still had water. And sometimes some trash falls in there. Now, I have heard of professors who, who if your percent yield is less than 80%, they make you redo it. I've gone to five different colleges, taking chemistry at all five of them, and never had that happen to me. But I have heard that sometimes professors do that. You, in, in college, you have a lab class that's separate than your regular class, and some of those lab teachers are intense. In chemistry. All right, do we understand that idea? That was easy, wasn't it? Okay, let's do another one. Are you can give me the dot? Yes. Okay, so now oh, I want you to guess this. Let's do it right there. What of factors do you think could affect a chemical reaction that can like speed it up, help it react better? What could you do to get a reaction working a little better? Yes? Introduce a catalyst. You could have a catalyst. That can make it work faster. What else? Yes? Temperature, you can heat it up. What else could you do? There's a clue in your notes in the little picture there. Does anybody recognize what that picture is? Pressure. Pressure. That's an instant pot. 
Those are those are the new uh, that and the air fryer is what everybody's excited about. So we can increase the temperature, we can increase the pressure, and we're going to talk about catalysts, but not yet. We can also increase the concentration. The symbol for concentration in chemistry are square brackets. That's why there's a picture of Dawn with little square brackets on yours. So we could make, you know, say if you were like wanting to do a gas fire and you've got gas and you, you put it on something you want to burn, it's not burning enough, then you could add a little more gas. Now don't do that, you'll burn your house down. But if you were, say like, you know, you worked somewhere that, that you needed to do that, then you could increase the concentration. The reason why these three work is because of collision theory. If you increase the temperature, the molecules will bang into each other more and are more likely to react. If you increase the pressure, you're squishing the molecules closer, they're more likely to react. And if you increase the concentration, there's more molecules, they're more likely to bang into each other and react. So collision theory is why these three things can affect a chemical reaction. Sometimes they need a catalyst, like how Tyson said, or also this reaction, it might need something else, okay? With my reaction with a match, it is the wood reacts with the oxygen in the air. I've got wood, I've got a oxygen, why is it not reacting? Why is this match not burning? I got everything it needs. What? I need kind of, uh, what? I need a collision. And more than that, I need a little energy to get it going. It's called activation energy. And once, and I got that energy from the chemical reaction of the two chemicals uh, in the match head and on the striker box. Now that reaction's over. You can tell it's over. The reaction that's going now all by itself is that the oxygen in the air is reacting with the match and it doesn't need the match head anymore. Do you need something? Uh, come back in about five, ten minutes. Okay, all right, collision theory. So sometimes you need activation energy, and that's what I provided with my match. It's called activation energy, and it's just a little push to get it started. You can diagram this energy. So this is the energy needed for this match reaction. Here's the wood and the oxygen not reacting. I gave it a little push, I struck the match, I gave it the activation energy, and then once that energy was used up, it could continue on its own. It could roll downhill by itself. Does that make sense to you? You only have to light the fire, you don't have to keep the match there. And then what uh, Tyson said, a catalyst. A catalyst is a matchmaker. It puts the chemicals together. Now, I think this, it, this isn't it exactly, but it, it's a good, useful illustration. I think about at Six Flags, near the sky buckets, across from the sky buckets near Thunder River is a store. In that store, they sell those rock candy on a stick. Do you know what I'm talking about? Delicious sugar candy on a stick. Now, how they make that is they super saturate a solution of sugar, and then they put the stick in it. The crystals form on the stick. They would not form like that without that stick. So the stick is a catalyst. The stick is not the candy. You don't want to eat the stick. But it is needed for those crystals to grow. The stick is the catalyst. It's something that allows the reaction to happen. It's not really part of the reaction. It just gets it together. With our catalyst there, it's giving a surface for those crystals to grow on. How do we feel about that? You can imagine that? Okay. Now, let me show you. Okay. This is our very last part. It is another math problem. But it's a little bit complicated. I'm only going to teach it to honors. So regular's going to skip it, but you're not. You get extra learning at the low, low price of free public education. But we're not going to look at that until after spring break. I think you've learned enough. So what we're going to do now is a lab. So science is great. Come back for part four or five, whatever.